tonight. The NDP have announced a couple of new candidates running in the election in the northern region. Plus, John Rostad has announced his support for involuntary treatment for those suffering from severe addictions. And the Bank of Canada recently announced another drop in the key interest rate. We look at how it will impact mortgages for local residents. Good evening, I'm Eddie Huband and welcome to CKPG News. Our top story, we are finally getting a clearer look at BC NDP candidates for Northern Ridings in the upcoming provincial election. Former chief of the Claytley Tenay First Nation, Clay Poutney, has been announced as the candidate for Prince George Valmont. Adam Burles brings us tonight's top story. Former chief of the Claytley Tenay, Clay Poutney, has been announced as the BC NDP candidate for the riding of Prince George Valmont in the October provincial election. Poutney, a resident of Prince George for 30 years, was chief for a one two year term from 2019 to 2021, and he says he wants to be a strong voice for the North. I've seen all walks of life. I've heard from everybody. And the biggest pieces are, you know, like what people are coming through is their frustrations and hopes. And it's kind of bringing that down. We're, we're kind of a little bit forgotten up here uh, being in northern BC. So I'd like to be a, a nice, strong voice. Pountney says if elected, he wants to help strengthen our health care system and find ways to put money back into the pockets of residents. I know we have a lot of struggles up here. Uh, there's, a, there's, you know, a housing crisis. I know a lot of major projects are being built and coming through, so it's making sure these are done responsibly as well, but also having good high paying jobs just to make sure that we have uh, that happening so people have a high quality of life just to ensure that they're not living paycheck to paycheck to make sure that, you know, they have time for trips with their family. Um, we have a lot, of, uh, a lot of natural resources up here which we can utilize to ensure that we're going to continue to grow. Former chief of the Lake Babi Nation, Murphy Abraham, was announced as the candidate for the riding of Nchako Lakes, challenging incumbent John Rustat. Political science instructor Chris Speech says that with just over a month to go until the election, name recognition may help with their respective campaigns. I think anytime there's an incumbent like John Rustad uh, running, uh, you're going to have an advantage because he's been in that position for a long time. He's basically a household name. Uh, but again, uh, both of the new NDP candidates, you know, they were chiefs, they're well known among their nations. Um, so, you know, they have a certain amount of name recognition for sure. Um, you know, they've got political experience, uh, you know, they've dealt with the press. But uh, yeah, whenever you're up against an incumbent, for sure, you're at a disadvantage. On his decision on running for the NDP, Pountney says that the party is on the right track. I'm really seeing a really great trajectory here with the NDP. And it's we got to keep that going. We got to keep that momentum to ensure that we get things like the the hospital. We get more housing. We get more social programming. A lot of these uh, affect a lot of people up here, and we really need these pieces for uh, being in the northern capital. Election day is October 19th, with the writ expected to be dropped on September 21st. Adam Burles, CK PG News. MLA Corley Oaks has announced that she will run as an independent candidate in the riding of Prince George North Caribou in the upcoming election. This now makes four sitting BC United MLAs now declared as independent candidates. Adam Burles reporting once again. He spoke to Oaks today and brings us more about her big decision. Corley Oaks is a three-term MLA and was elected for Caribou North in 2013, 2017 and 2020 as a BC Liberal. And up until Thursday afternoon, there was uncertainty on the future of her political career after Kevin Falcon announced he would be suspending BC United's campaign over two weeks ago. On Thursday, Oaks announced her decision and she is going to be running as an independent. My main focus has to be on the constituents, has to be on the riding, and the best path forward, the best option I believe for voters is to look at um, having some independence. I think it is going to be a really uh, uh, challenging parliament, uh, this upcoming parliament, and I think having somebody with experience, having somebody that has a proven track record, somebody that can work across the aisle, somebody who's a, a problem solver, Running as an independent, Oaks will not have an allegiance to a particular party, and she says that without being beholden to a party, she can focus on her constituents. I look forward to getting out into communities and to talk about uh, the solutions that I see, the vision that I think that we can carry forward to Victoria. And I'm really excited about the fact that 100% of my focus can be on the riding and not be distracted by party politics. 
The longtime MLA says that there are still seismic shifts happening on the B.C. political landscape and that with a number of incumbent MLAs running as independents, that is sending a message. I think the seismic shift uh, on the B.C. political landscape is just happening right now. It is about uh, independence in ridings that they can win in. I think that is also a clear message. If you look at the voting patterns, particularly in the riding of Prince George North Caribou, it is a moderate uh voting pattern and I think that there is a very clear path forward for um, an independent that can speak to the issues that are on people's minds but are not uh, doesn't have extreme views on either the left or the right. Currently, Oaks will run against Sheldon Clare of the Conservative Party and Randy Thompson of the Green Party. No NDP candidate for the riding has been announced yet. Adam Burles, CK, PG News. B.C. Premier David Eby says his government will end the provincial carbon tax on consumers and shift the onus onto big polluters if the federal government removes the legal requirement to keep the tax in place. Eby says B.C. residents are struggling with affordability, but a re-elected NDP government would make big polluters pay a price for carbon to take action on climate change. He says the federal government's approach to the carbon tax has badly damaged what was a political consensus on the issue in the province. More political news now. It was a commitment by the B.C. Conservatives to address what has become a hot political topic, with various polls showing public safety as a growing concern heading into the election. And today, party leader John Rustad has officially announced his plans to introduce involuntary treatment if elected. Cheryl Jan reports. They have been controversial issues for some time. Mental health, addictions, safe supply, open drug use and decriminalization. And the leader of the Conservative Party has come out with support for involuntary treatment, starting with children and youth. The parents want to try to have their child into treatment. And if the child decides not to, there's, they have no option. And so as a parent, if you have an 11-year-old child and that child is addicted, you're going to want to do everything you can for that child to try to give them a way to be able to move on from the addiction, to get treated, and to be able to have a normal life. John Rustad says his plan will look at compassionate intervention legislation, secure facilities for treatment for those who pose a risk to themselves and others, and crisis response units. And while the proposal focuses on youth, he won't rule out adults. So that's something else we are looking at. So for example, if you have somebody who ODs and is brought back to life, Clearly, they're at risk of harming themselves. And so, and they're obviously not in a place to be able to make good decisions on their own behalf. And so we are actually going to look at that as well as a potential for uh, involuntary care and for voluntary treatment to try to get them into some sort of um, path towards building a, a quality of life again. But for recovering addicts, forcing treatment is not the answer. They will go back out and use and their risk of overdose is much higher because their tolerances went down and the substances are so toxic right now that they could use the same amount they went in as using and be overdosed and passed away. And dead people do not recover. And they point to one glaring omission in this region, treatment in the first place. Daniel Roy does outreach work and knows of a large segment of the addicted population that wants treatment now. There are quite a few, but it's a vicious circle. Um, when and if the detox facility here even answers their phones half the time. I've been in there, I know how many beds they have, and it, it's never once been full. Um, Northern Health needs to take a look at that themselves. I'm not trying to call anybody out, but they need to have a serious look at that. He points to the empty youth containment centre on Gun Road, potentially an ideal location, and Rustad is the first to admit the problem won't be solved overnight. Cheryl Jan, CKPG News. In crime news, after receiving surveillance footage from a local business owner, Prince George RCMP have arrested a man known for a prolific string of break and enters. 43 year old Alan Douglas Nye was arrested on September 5th after police received multiple reports of break and enters downtown. RCMP say Nye is well known to the police for similar offenses, and at the moment he currently remains in custody until his next court appearance.
It can definitely be something that is very frustrating in the uh, life of an investigation when we get a suspect arrested um, and have brought them forward to the courts and you know if they are released right away again. Um, that can be very frustrating for our police officers. Uh, it, we try not to let it um, affect our work though and we try to uh, continue to perform at a really high level of efficiency um, and continue to bring these investigations forward to the courts um, in order to you know show how often these um, suspects you know tend to Reoffend. The Regional Hospital Board has approved a plan to help with the costs of the surgical tower at the University Hospital of Northern BC. The plans for that tower had been in the works for years and the province put speculation to an end in August. But the board's decision today didn't come without plenty of discussion. Cheryl Jan reports. Fraser Fort George Regional Hospital District is contributing a total of $365 million in funding, $319 million towards the acute care tower. That was Health Minister Adrian Dix announcing the commitment by the Regional Hospital Board to the new $1.6 billion surgical tower. And that commitment has been finalized now by the Regional Hospital Board with a bylaw approved for a commitment of $318 million. That's on top of the $45.3 million committed to date for the business plan and the early works. At the end of the day, you know, I fully recognize this was a, a really, really contentious um, issue, probably the most challenging one that I've worked on in my 17 years. The commitment is $365 million or 21.6 percent of the total cost of the project and there was plenty of concern voiced over keeping that dollar figure as it is regardless of cost overruns. If for some immaculate amazing reason they come in under budget uh, you know there is some uncertainty with wolf you know things change in the construction landscape and anything else uh, that we are not going to that 365 cap it's whatever's less the 21.6 percent another commitment sought by the hospital board and now confirmed was that the regional district will not begin paying the final bill until 2028 or 29 financial years but director Kyle Sampson wanted to ensure the regional district didn't begin paying until the province spent its first billion dollars um, rather than being the first where they're standing at the you know at the dig site with our check in hand we're saying no you spend your money first and then you come to us later we want to be some of the last dollars drawn on Samson also pursued approaching the surrounding six regional districts to see how they may contribute. But that was considered vexatious by more than one director, who countered by saying health care coverage should not be cobbled out district by district, region by region. And I asked them to fund our facility, which some of their residents may use, but shouldn't we be doing the same for the folks uh, out, out west? So, yes, I used the word vexatious, and but it really just undermines the need for a provincial-wide uh, uh, health care funding system. Also, the timeline of the project has already been moved from a completion date of 2031 to 2033. Cheryl Jan, CKPG News. The Bank of Canada recently announced the key interest rate dropped once again, and it could mean more savings in a wide variety of areas. Tommy Osborne spoke with local financial experts on what this announcement means for our economy moving forward and whether or not we can expect a little bit more money in our pockets. We're getting control of our inflation. For the first time in years, there may be reason for optimism regarding inflation. As the Bank of Canada announced, the key interest rate dropped by 0.25% for the third straight month. While this individual drop won't create a huge difference, the continuing downward trend is certainly good news for many. We'll probably start seeing cars, car loans and stuff a little bit cheaper, which is which is good for the affordability of the average person. The trend is po is very positive because the, the um, Bank of Canada is actually taking a nice control and a slow control of it. As we start to trend down, this one just seems to have given more reassurance than anything that we are in fact trending down and that we will continue this sort of ongoing trend. The lower key interest rates and the more controlled inflation impact your overall ability in just about every aspect of day-to-day -day living. And it could also help current homeowners or those looking to get into the market afford a mortgage. We are seeing many people who've been on the sidelines now deciding that it is the right time for them, that they feel safe enough to make that leap into home ownership. The biggest change is going to be for people who have adjustable or variable rate mortgages. Basically anyone who has a fluctuating rate that is set according to the Bank of Canada's prime rate. 
but how much can you expect to save? Some experts estimate $125 per month on a $500,000 loan, while Buman says $11 per every $100,000 due to the 0.25% drop. While that's not especially significant, what does matter is that this is the third consecutive drop, so these savings compound, and the rate is expected to continue dropping. It's less of a savings and more of a normalization or going back toward the, the interest rate that they started with and also the payment that they started with. While predicting the future is never a sure thing, the key interest rate's continued drop signals that the skyrocketing inflation from the COVID years may finally be settling down. Tommy Osborne, CKPG News. The lowest gas price in Prince George is sitting at $1.55.9 per liter at Costco. The lowest price in the province right now is in Salmon Arm at $1.49.9 per liter. Manitoba has the lowest fuel prices on average in the country at $1.31.3 per litre, while BC has an average price of $1.69 per litre. CKPG Sports is delivered by Domino's. For a very limited time, PG Domino's is offering 50% off all pizzas when you order online. As the Prince George Cougars are just over a week away from kicking off the new season, Jaden DeMello spoke to Aiden Foster, as well as his head coach Mark Lamb, about the sophomores' upcoming campaign. After battling to make the Cougars as a 16-year-old, Aiden Foster has improved a lot of his game in the offseason, preparing for an important role with the team. Just getting stronger faster so I can play those bigger minutes in the bigger areas and bigger parts of the game. So. Yeah, just more of my skills everywhere all over the ice so I can give the best for the team. Though Foster put up just nine points all of last season, he brings much more to the squad that doesn't show up on the score sheet. The other parts of hockey are very important. Uh, you know, playing the body, being aggressive. He's a, you know, he's 6'3", he's, he's a big guy that's not, a, not afraid to get in there and throw his body around. And the importance of that in, in the regular season and in playoffs is immense. Yeah, I just try to give the boys a little more energy, you know, get them up and so then they kind of start following after I give a hit or take a hit, just get in a battle, we get the boys in the battle, so then we get going from there. Along with having a full season under his belt, the Lloyd Minster native also got to battle against some of the best in the league every practice. We have a whole whack of guys in NHL camp, and you know that's exactly where they want to go. So the leadership that they've they've watched, uh, it should be pretty easy for them to see that that could be them next year. It's really exciting, you know, seeing the older guys go on and higher level and just excitement around the room and all the younger guys coming in and just we got sp something special going on right now and just to get started it's really exciting. Foster may be entering his NHL draft season but a call up to the big leagues won't just be given. It's a process you can't get too far ahead of yourself and think that uh, you know you're just going to go out and score a bunch of points and everything's going to you know work for you because you played in the league last year you just got to come in and be the type of player you are and excel in that area. And the 17-year-old plans on doing just that with his focus on one thing, the Cougars. Just play my game and just worry about the team. And then once the team does good, good things will come. So just focus on the team and just play as we can and good things will happen. With his team first mindset, the youngster hopes to be a big part of another big season in Prince George. Jaden DeMello, CKPG News. Just a day away from their preseason opener at Copar Memorial Arena, the Spruce Kings have named their captain for the upcoming season. Lyndon Don't Call Him Macau Mako was announced earlier today as the 23rd captain since the team joined the BCHL in 1996. Mako is from Vanderhoof and is entering his fifth season as part of the Kings organization. He's coming off back-to-back 16-goal -back seasons, and in his 143 BCHL regular season games, it's produced 35 goals and 35 assists. The 20-year-old will don the sea for the first time this weekend in a preseason doubleheader against the Langley Rivermen. And after the TSX is up 263 points to close at 23,475. The Dow Jones is up 235 points to close at 41,097. And Artemis Gold went up 67 cents to close at $12.56.
Good evening again. We are in for a change tomorrow, but we'll take you back from earlier today where it was actually pretty nice out there for the most part through our Thursday. But this is the system here now that we're watching. So that was spreading some showers uh, up towards the north coast today. Prince Rupert definitely showery late today and that will carry into tomorrow. And this system is tracking inland, so it will impact us going into our day tomorrow and sliding south as well. You'll get a better idea on the future cast. Just a chance throughout the early half of the day tomorrow of a few showers but you can see through the afternoon hours later especially that system does intensify so the bulk of it will be over us and we're looking at a good chance of showers later into the afternoon and evening it does track east quite quickly so on Saturday we may have a lingering shower to start but through the afternoon especially we should start to clear out once again 16 is where we'll drop that temperature to tomorrow so it will be a bit cooler 20 degrees though Fort St. John still in pretty good shape up in the piece and down through the southern interior a bit of a, a change on the way for them for the weekend, but tomorrow doesn't look too bad. 17 Vancouver, Victoria as well, certainly going to be cooler and wetter for the next few days. And across our broadcast region, yes, a big change on the way. We are seeing the rain uh, continue, or moving back in. 15 degrees for Burns Lake. Clouds and showers throughout your day, around 16 for many other areas, including Vanderhoof, Fort St. James. 17 Quinell, not a lot in terms of precipitation yet for Quinell. That will be more so for Saturday. McBride as well, looking pretty good for tomorrow afternoon. So 19 in Edmonton, it was a wet and cool one there today, but tomorrow doesn't look too bad. 18 in Regina with sunshine and throughout the uh, prairies, lots of summer-like temperatures have been uh, enjoyed there, but starting to cool down just a touch and we're seeing a change in the conditions in Winnipeg as well. Further east though, lots of sunshine. Temperatures are just right as we move through many places there. Mainly sunny skies for our weekend. Again, we could have a lingering shower for maybe early Saturday in some places, but certainly by most of the weekend uh, or, or overall the weekend itself looks pretty good nice and comfortable and we're not anticipating too much in the way of precipitation hanging around into Sunday especially so Burns Lake Sunday looks to be your best day of the weekend it will be still a bit cooler and maybe a bit wet on Saturday and certainly tomorrow as well seven overnight tonight and Mackenzie cloudy skies expected mostly clouds into the day tomorrow still the odd sunny break here and there it'll likely be through the afternoon hours just ahead of the system moving in that you see the clouds uh, start to uh, develop 14 on Saturday 16 Sunday so again it is a cooler pattern and a wetter one for sure and unfortunately McBride or McKenzie may have a few more showers lingering even into Sunday Sunday though in McBride looks good nice and sunny a little bit milder than it will be on Saturday where it will uh, certainly be cooler and wetter for sure and tonight overall uh, the overnight low is uh, down to about plus two Quinell six overnight mainly cloudy skies into your Friday and then there are the showers for Saturday and really just Saturday seems to be the wetter day Sunday returning to some sunshine for us we do have the showers into Saturday here but likely just the morning hours lingering from that system that's going to hit us later into Friday so cooler temperatures but Sunday looks to be nice and sunny and even Saturday afternoon we should get some nice sunshine returning so yes tomorrow uh, looking at a few clouds out there chance of showers throughout the day but a better chance into the later half. CKPG Sports is delivered by Domino's. For a very limited time, PG Domino's is offering 50% off all pizzas when you order online. Tonight, CKP3 with Jaden DeMello showcases the best of last night's MLB action with the Blue Jay coming so close to history and the NL MVP race heating up late in the season. Bowden Francis had two one-hit games in his past four starts, and heading into the sixth against the Mets, he needed some help to keep New York hitless. And this is hit in the air to deep left field. Schneider is back, jumps, and he caught it! After the help from Schneider, Francis kept his no-hitter alive until the ninth, and I'll let the broadcast take it away. And remember, his last no-hit bid, the leadoff hitter in the ninth, hit the home run to end it. That's driven to deep right field, and a home run ends this no-hit bid. Linsanity! Francisco Lindor ties the game with a ninth inning home run. For the second time in his last four starts, the 28-year-old's no-hit bid was blown in the final inning, and this time by one of the National League MVP favorites. Lindor sits second on that list, though, behind Shohei Otani. Almost every game, it feels like he hits a towering shot. Torches one to right center field. He's carrying the bat. It's a bullet out of here. 40 
47 and 47. After stealing another base in the game, Otani is now just three home runs and two stolen bases away from the first ever 50-50 season in MLB history to wrap up tonight's CKP3. That's our show tonight, folks. Thanks for joining us as always. Caden Fanshawe, the man who makes all the money in the building, up next, Adam Burles at 6.30. Here's looking at you, Prince George. Have a good night.